In this week's quick tip, I wanted to spend some time showing you how I'm able to get some nice looking renders out of Fusion in a short amount of time. And while I'm at it, I'll show you a couple tips along the way. So let's go. The first thing you want to do is apply appearances. This includes those materials, finishes, textures, and the like. Hopefully you've already done most or all of this in the modeling environment. This makes working there much more pleasant, but will also help us skip this step when it comes to rendering. Next up, and where we'll focus most of these efforts, is in the scene settings. And right off the bat, the first thing I want to do here is make it appear that this model is really flying and hasn't just finished a belly landing. So let's lose the ground plane. After that, I want it to look like it's in clear blue skies. So this environment background setting is not doing the trick. We'll change to the environment library tab to see if there's anything else that might work better. We can try different things here like dry lake bed, skylight, and we can even download or add custom environments suitable for this majestic craft. But for a quick turnaround, I might just use a solid color. And while white is clean, let's see if we can find a nice blue, maybe a grayish blue. Some of you might know an RGB value that aligns to your brands too. So we can always type this in for precision. What we have works pretty well, and the model no longer blends in with the white background we previously had. So that's a win. As we get closer to something acceptable, we'll start to use our in-canvas rendering tool to get better insight on the changes we're making. As we adjust views or change settings, this will give a clear indication of what the final rendering might look like. Note that in the corner you can see the status of the rendering process. And what I also want you to note is that it's going to stop when it reaches excellent quality. This is an in-canvas setting, but it can be set to resume to final quality or to infinitely render if that floats your boat. Just click and drag the small arrow on the bottom to the setting you want. If your in-canvas rendering reaches a quality fit for marketing, Make sure to save it out using this button. But please beware that any mouse movement causing view changes will wipe all of the hard work and computation time. This is something we can overcome, however, with the addition of the ability to lock the view found in the in-canvas settings. With that on and while rendering, if I try to change views, I'll get told this. In short, it says no can do. Anyway, we'll turn that off and look into a couple more settings that I often use. Focal length is one of those. This emphasizes or minimizes the effects of the perspective view. So it goes from an orthographic to something you might expect with a fisheye lens. Of course, like most things rendering, this is up to you to determine what's best. Finally, depth of field helps create those images where you might focus on some portion of the model in the fore or background and blur the rest. Again, with this, similar to the previous option we were discussing, try different angles, try different focal points, try different blur settings until you dial it in. Then send those renderings to the cloud do it locally, or resume the in-canvas render. For top quality renders, you'll definitely want to address more settings like appearances, textures, custom environments, etc. But for a quick render and a quick tip, this'll do.